Hey there, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. That was just Dio with Rock and Roll. We had Stand Up and Shout there. Some Crystal Viper with Rise of the Witch Queen and The Witch is Back. Hell yeah, had some Man of War in there with Metal Warriors and Kings of Metal. And some Twisted Sister. We, had, we were bringing it back. We had The Price and The Beast. All of these songs here are going out to our Metal Queen, Doro. She is our Valentine for today. Um, coming up next is actually included in the interview when we speak with the Metal Queen. It's all for metal. You know that, Tom, that song, Tom. But anyways... So let's crank it up, and big shout out to everyone that's tuned in. Grab your drinks, grab your, de- your whatever you gotta grab, because the awesome interview is coming up. Grab your Valentine, grab anything you need to grab today. So let's crank it up, here's Doro, all for metal, and then we'll get into the awesome interview. So crank it up. Hey, Metal Heads and Headbangers, this is Doro Passion, and listen to the Angels of Metal Show on Metal Devastation, where Metal reigns supreme. I wish you all the best. Keep on rocking and stay metal.
Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderous. I'm here with the metal queen herself, Dora Pesh. How are you, Dora? Hey, very good. Uh, great to talk to you. And yeah, we're just ready to, yeah, to, to go on tour again and to hit the monsters of rock cruise. And yeah. Boy, I'm, you're I'm busy. Really excited. Yes. So how, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how have you been since we spoke in 2017? Anything changing? Yeah, I see. I think when we last spoke, I think we just had our DVD out. Uh, it was uh, strong and proud, and we worked on that like two and a half years. And uh, I think it was a great DVD, like three discs and a live CD. And, and then I was working on this new album, and it's the first double album, Forever Boys, Forever United. Uh. And it has 25 songs, and I, yeah, I, I love doing it. It was such a cool vibe with great, great special guests on there. Especially on the song All for Metal, it's this anthem sounds a little bit like All We Are and great people singing on it like Miller of Creator and Johan Heck of Amana Mars and um, Chuck Dilly of Testament and oh. Jeff Waters of the Lion and like, so many great guests. With Boris Dane of Century who's actually not anymore with us but we were great friends and so yeah, so we filmed the video for the song and it was clearly the first single because it had such a hooky uh, chorus and uh, yeah and then we were releasing album touring non-stop touring the states last year with metal church that was a great fun tour and now yeah now the tour dates are set for for this um the first leg actually of the america tour that's amazing and yeah so i was always playing or being in the studio and yeah, life is good. It, it, I, I love it. And I know. Fans were always awesome. So that's, that's my, always my big inspiration. And yeah. What was your favorite track on the new album? I know it's a double album, so it's kind of big, but can you pick a favorite track from the album? Yeah, oh man, since it's so, um, like so extreme from super heavy, fast to super, you know, soulful, I would say from the soulful songs, I love Soldier of Metal, from the fast songs, I like Bastardos, and uh, from the anthems, of course, all for metal with all these great people singing and playing on, on them songs. And then, I, can't, I, can't, I, I love them all, it's always hard to pick, but these three, um, yeah, and the fun song is always Blood, Sweat, Rock and Roll, and Life, that seems to work great, we have a little sing-along when we play it live, so, yeah, so these ones I would pick, but I love them all. And the whole album was dedicated to Lenny Tilmister, and the first song I wrote for this album was called Living Life to the F Fullest for Lenny, oh. and I thought, man, it should start with Lenny, and it should end with Lenny, and the end of the record, before the bonus, bonus tracks is uh, lost in the ozone, a Motorhead classic, which I love so much, and Lenny was always the best with lyrics, so I thought, yeah, you know, it's like that's the whole vibe of He's up there singing with you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, we did many times duets, and it was so great in the studio. Um, yeah, the first time we uh, recorded something in 2000, it was for this album Calling the Wild, and we did Alone Again. It was mm -hmm. a song he wrote on acoustic guitar, and Love Me Forever, the modern classic. And the last duet we did on the Race of Fist album, uh, and that song was called It Still Hurts. Mm -hmm. It was a very uh, mellow, dark, romantic uh, song. And uh, and I really love his soulful side. Uh, Lemmy is such a deep person. So it was really cool to, yeah, to, to do something soulful. And I know every time I listen to that track, I think of both of you. And it just it's just has such a great meaning to it. Oh, oh that that that's nice to hear. Yeah, I, I miss him every day, but I always think he's still with us. And so was Ronnie James Dio. Like these two, they were like the most important people in my life, and they still are. And um, yeah, yeah. So you're so, carrying so it. That we can talk and I know. I know. I saw you were on the '80s co '80s issue cover of the Metal Hammer magazine. That's pretty cool. You were on there with a lot of great people. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that from I think the Metal Hammer UK. And yeah, man, all, all my favorites like Gene Simmons and Dio and Metallica. Actually, uh, my first gigs I've ever had. Well, actually with Metallica, like in some little clubs, and I think it was the first gig they ever I did in Europe, and Lita Ford, and see, and uh, I was, um, 
I was just in the studio with Lida. There's something cooking. We're doing something together, and we recorded something already. So I'm, I'm sure people, yeah, we really like it. I'm excited for that. We're friends for such a long time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are like together forever. Something yeah. I've, you know, since <laughs> I was growing up, I've listened to you. <laughs> oh, that, that's so cool. That's good. And I, I always remember this great photo session with Lita Ford. It was for Rip Magazine a long time ago. But ever since, you know, we always yeah, stayed in touch. And then and I, I got inducted into the Hall of Heavy Metal History like one and a half years ago. Oh. And the guys, they flew over from America to Wacken, to the big festival. And then we stayed in touch. And it was such a great event. It meant so much to me. And then the guy, his name was Steve Goldby. He said, hey, girl, how about... We surprised Lita Ford. How about you and Dr. Lita Ford into the Hall of Heavy Metal History? And that was last year. And then, you know, then we started talking, you know, we said, man, well, we should do something together. So we finally did. And yeah, and I'm really excited about that. When is that, that going to be coming out? Oh, I don't know. Um, she's still in the middle of, like, I think, mixing the record. Yeah. And, um, I don't know when it will be out, but yeah, probably in the next couple of months. And so, yeah, the song will be on. And I'm, I'm sure it might be a single. And I don't know if it's the first single, but I think it's. Uh, yeah, well, I'm it, sure it it's going to be awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. I also. I did a video stuff. Yep, and I know you've been very busy because you also did a new recording of a song for a German movie, too. Yeah, yeah, it was actually an action movie, and the film producer. His name was Peter. He called me up and I was just on tour in Russia. And he, he said, oh, I would love if you could sing like the last song of this movie. And, and I did. And, and it came out great. And I love doing movie soundtracks. I did a couple of movie soundtracks, the whole music. Um, there are three movies. I don't know if you heard of them. It's called Arnold, The Path of the Warrior. And I played a little part in that movie as well. Oh. The little warrior, which I love to play that part. And yeah, and then the, and the film director said, hey, you want to do the music? And I said, oh, I would love to. It would be an honor. So, yes, yeah, so I'm totally on, on the side, like doing our own records, of course, it's, you know, priority. But sometimes on the side, like doing some little projects or, or especially the independent film movie makers, they're something so, um, you know, crazy. And, you know, and, like I always get, you know, so inspired by, like, you know, people who are, yeah, who are creative and a little bit, you know, like, yeah, like, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be a lot of fun for you, something different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, I tell you, I'm so happy that I survived it because it was in the middle of the mountains in Switzerland, and, man, I thought I would freeze to death, and <laughs> it, was, it was hardcore. It was a lot of, like, you know, a lot of, blood and pain and oh man I thought wow now I'm so ready to go on tour you know tour is now cake you know compared to doing a movie and yeah it was it was, it was rough it was rough but, but but yeah but I'm still here and you know when they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger definitely in that case I would say that's totally true Awesome, that's cool. So when you're out playing live, what's your favorite track to play out of every song you've ever made? What is your favorite track to play when you're out live? Oh, um, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like the anthem where everybody seems so happy singing along. It feels like we're so, you know, deeply connected. I love it. And usually it's the last song in our set list. And I love it. And there's another song I love because it's so soulful. It's called Deep Inside My Heart Forever. Forever means forever. And both of these songs were on the Triumph and Agony album. It was my first time that I came to America. I loved America right away so much. I always wanted to go to America. And then we could uh, do this album. Actually, we did it in New York. Great people played on it. Cody Powell, he played drums on it. And um, it was it was. The I had the time of my life. It was in 87, you know, the peak of metal. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And then we went on tour with uh, Ronnie James Dio in Europe and with Megadeth in the States. And that album and especially these two songs, yeah, I still love playing them. And they're still as fresh to me as, yeah, when we did in, in 87. So, yeah, these two. 
Monsters of Rock Cruise, how different is that going to be for you compared to any other cruise that you have done? I know there's a lot of, you know, really, really cool bands that you're getting back together with. And what's your plans for this yeah. cruise? Yeah, actually, yeah, I was um, playing on the Monsters of Rock Cruise before, so I know, you know, it's, it's always very well organized. The fans are in great spirits, and, you know, and all my friends are playing there, and I see all these great bands again, and I'm excited to see Tesla again. I like Tesla so much, love the singer, and um, yeah, so we will put on the best show, and, and then I'm, yeah, I, I see that I can watch some other bands, and the last time on the Monsters of Rock Cruise, actually, I met Lita Ford, and we did another photo session with Mark Weiss, who was a big photographer in the 80s. He was in New Jersey, and she had this book coming out, so he, yeah, he did a little, little video and an interview with Lita and me, and then I watched her on the Monster of Rock Cruise. It was one and a half years ago, and it was awesome. And the last time I did the Megadeth Cruise, the Mega Cruise, a couple of months ago, and um, yeah, now another cruise, so... So I, yeah, I know what it's like. I hope I will not get seasick because one <laughs> time I was so seasick. Oh my God, you want to die. It's like, it's not, not a big feeling, but you know, when there's showtime, suddenly it's all good. But before and afterwards, oh God, it was a different <laughs> story. So I hope, I hope I will manage and I'm, I'm really excited. Well, so I hope so too. I know. And, yeah, and I think it's sold out, so all the people are probably in great spirits and you know and having a good time and it's good to, to have people like yeah like walk up to you and like, you know, talk a little bit it's like yeah it's more like you know you're on, on, on a vacation all together the whole family gets together so uh, yeah I'm excited I can bet all right we're gonna take a break here and listen to blood sweat and rock and roll crank it up No! 
favorite i have to say i love all for metal as well but blood sweat and rock and roll hell yeah dora that's yeah, amazing um, there was actually a true story um we were playing um, in a little club and you know sometimes backstage it's a different story you know it's all dirty and you know and something very small and we had a great gig and our guitar player, Bas Mars, he was like sweating and stuff and you know, and, and he was changing his shirt and then, you know, he wanted to put his shirt on a hanger and then, you know, he cut his hand and like there was a little rusty nail and it <laughs> went straight through his hand and I thought, oh my God, and then he started like bleeding and I saw the blood, the sweat and I thought, oh fuck, when you put him, but I guess it's all about blood, sweat and rock and roll and he looked at me and he said, oh yes, oh yes, but hey, that's a good sound title, so we wrote the song and yeah. You know, <laughs> so you'll so forever I'm remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Out of all the music in the world, and you know, you have your music and everyone else, what's your favorite music to listen to when you're not listening to your own? Oh, actually, I still love all the music I grew up with. Um, I, you know, definitely still love all the bands of the new wave of British heavy metal. Um, you know, like, like Sex, um, Motorhead, um, Dio, Wasp, um, Priest, um, Accept, um, um, sometimes when I like it a little bit more relaxing, Pink Floyd, I love David Gilmore's guitar, and yeah, sometimes, you know, maybe there's Metallica, Danzig, uh, yeah, like, like I'm on a mass, I like them a lot, we did a couple of things together, some guys on their album, and Johan was singing on my album, so from the newer bands, I like, yeah, Arch Enemy, I'm on a mass, I'm still a big kids fan, and I grew up with kids, and they still inspire me, and I had a great, great chance to work with Gene Simmons, he produced one of our records, it was in 1990, and he was awesome, and he was so caring, and man, he was really, really cool, and Tommy Fair, who's now the guitar player, and he was actually the co-producer, and he played many of the guitar solos on his record, and yeah, so, so still all the people I, I grew up with, and yeah, the, the love them, and yeah, sometimes here and there, there are some new bands coming up, and I think, oh, that's cool, and usually, um, yeah, it's, it's probably harder now to really break through, like, I think in the 80s, it might have been a little bit easier, now it's, uh, I think it's very hard for a young band, for a new band, um, you definitely have to, yeah, you know, to to put everything into it and um, yeah. so sometimes we take young or new bands on the road and they are in our support band and you know I, I always hope that something you know big will come up for them but it's, it's, it's not easy <laughs> I know well at least you can give them some advice when you're out on tour with them you know you can do this or you can do yeah. that and here's what you need to do and yes and, and actually I had like you know I was I was so grateful going on tour with all these great bands. My first big tour was actually with Judas Priest. I learned so much from them. And then it was Wasp. And then Ronnie James Dio. And, and with Ronnie James Dio, we toured the second time in 2000 in America. And ah, it was, it was great. And, and of course, with Motorhead, we toured in Texas. And I definitely could say I, I could learn from so many great people. And just from watching them, how they would do something that is that was so inspiring, and yeah, and for young bands, yeah, I think, you know, 
don't even talk too much about things, just like, you know, feel the spirit and then, you know, and do what you love the most, you know, follow your heart and then nothing. Exactly. Yep. So you have a great big tour coming up that in 2020. Where are you starting and where are you ending? Yeah, actually, yeah, the first gig is now on the month of our cruise, and then we do the 40th anniversary of Saxon. And she will actually, um, this, I was always coming to my shows, and I was a guest on their shows, and now we are a guest on their 40th anniversary show. It's in my former hometown in Germany, in Düsseldorf. That will be the second gig, and we have another festival in Sweden, and then a uh, European tour, and then we come back to the States, and we will play April, May, all over. It's the first leg of the America tour, but we will play like, yeah, like, like the LA area, and so we will play in um, Maryland, the M3 festival, which I'm so, you know, excited about being on that day. And we will do the anniversary for the Rainbow in LA, the 40 year, hey, 48 years anniversary of the Rainbow Club. And wow. I was having great memories, like hanging out with Lenny in the Rainbow. That was his living room. So, yeah, and then, you know, we tour all over. And by the end of the year, we have some more gigs planned. And maybe something we need a thought. We don't know yet, but uh, we we'll definitely more think of something. Yeah, and then it's non-stop touring, doing all the summer festivals, and then, yeah, touring some more, I think South America and Australia is on, on our list this year as well, and yeah, and that's, not, yeah. And then there's a little time to do a new record, but I will try to always. Yeah, that was my new question, if you had another album in the near future, or what were your plans, and, yeah. you know, what do you do when you're not on tour? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's just usually in studio time, doing demos, or, yeah, usually it's always music every every day, and uh, for relaxation, I don't have actually no time, like, I never rest, or I never take a vacation, I do a little bit martial arts, I love martial arts, I love sports, but other than that, it's either, yeah, being on tour or in the studio, and, and we're working on a new album, actually, I must say, the latest album, yeah, I, I put all 25 songs on, which I love, like all the ideas, everything I always save for, you know, for some, whatever, for, for when the time would be right. So, um, it will probably take another year to have a new album. Um, yeah, I got my own record label called the Diamonds Productions, and I can put out, like, all the records which are not anymore available. I got the rights back uh, to some records, to the Calling the Wild album. Piano Evil, Classic Diamonds, Fights, and all the DVDs, so I want to put them out on our label. Maybe doing a little bit extra special package and like, you know, the picture of vinyl and stuff. And we are working on like something before Christmas, like a double CD. It's called, it will be called Magic Diamonds, that's the best of ballads. Yeah, something for the Christmas time. It's no Christmas uh, songs, only like, you know, like, Mellow, nice, so soulful songs on there. Very cool. And, uh, yeah, and then a new record next year. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. That I'll look forward to that. And congratulations on your new um, record label. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought it's such a shame when all these records are not anymore available. And then I thought, yeah, let's let's do it. So and I can always do special things like you know vinyl picture vinyl, cassettes, you know, all like these little things which the like, diehard fans like to collect and stuff. So, and I'm especially, I, I, I love vinyl, I, you know, and I'm old school, so I like all these special stuff. And, yeah. That's great. All right, I have a question actually from one of our listeners, Risa. She would like to know, what's it like for you to be a music legend in the rock and metal scene and also at the same time being a woman? Has it been tough for you over the years? I tell you, it was always great. I definitely must say I always wanted to become a singer when I was three years old. I wanted to have a band and I wanted to do music. Then when I was 15, I had my first band. And ever since, I thought, yeah, I want to do it, you know, so the day I die, if that's possible. And being a woman, I always felt really good. Um, I always felt very comfortable. It's tough for for any musician, like, you always have to fight for your music, you know, for your style, you know, to, you know, to 
go on tour or to keep your record here. So I think it's uh, it's not that different for a man. And I always felt, I felt really good being a woman. This is great. I love it. And um, yeah, and I always felt I was treated really good, especially by by other bands when we were on tour, like the guys of Judas Priest or Saxon or Remy or Motorhead. We were always very nice, respectful, and yeah. And I, yeah, I always felt really good, really good, yeah. Yep, that's amazing. And one more question from her. You've met so many fans over the years. Do you have an, a special encounter with one of your fans that stands out and while meeting them, and why? Oh, God, I tell you, I really honestly must say, every day meeting the fans is for me special. It doesn't have to be a big deal, it doesn't have to be a big conversation, just, you know, when I see the fans, I'm, you know, I'm I'm, I'm in heaven, so so there's not one, one special day where I can say this and this happens, it's all like, wow, to me, it's, you know, it's magic, and yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's fantastic to, to, to see the fans every day in small, big clubs, uh, festivals, buttons, it doesn't matter. It's, um, yeah, to me, I live for the fans, so, so every person is special to me, and, um, yeah, so it's, yeah. <laughs> and I see so many fans out there have tattoos of you. You should maybe get your own signature tattoo. Yeah, yeah, actually, I started tattooing the fans uh, like a couple of years ago. There was this guy hard fan. He said, "Oh, can you tattoo my arm?" And I said, "I can try. I'm not a professional, but I can try." So I tried it, and then the next fan came up. Oh, can you do it? You know, and then I did it for a little while. But um, <laughs> I must say, it you know, it looks all right, but. They're much, much better tattoo artists, so, <laughs> so, but sometimes if somebody says, oh, I want to have something special or a signature or a little heart, something easy, I, yeah, I could do it. And, oh. and I'm, I'm so happy when they, when I see they have great tattoos and sometimes the artists are phenomenal, so it always makes me happy. And I know, you know, it makes them happy and, yeah, and, and they can always count on me that I always will be there. I will never give up or say, I, you do know something else or start a family. They, they know it's like it's dedication from my side and when I see their tattoos and I think, oh, that's, that's true. dedication to, uh, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. All right, so where can everyone find your merchandise and how can they get in contact with you and check you out when you're on tour? Yeah, actually all our sources, like on Instagram, it's Doro Metal Queen, and Facebook, it's Doro Official, and our merch in America, it's Merch Now, if you guys want to check that out, and then, yeah, see you hopefully on tour, see you on one of the upcoming concerts, I would love that, and we we'll always have special merch, yeah, on tour especially, yeah, for the fans, like, what you can buy, like, in the shop. So, yeah, but, uh, but when they show up, I'm, I'm a happy baby, and, yeah, uh, <laughs> we don't have to buy much stuff, they just, just, just come and party and rock with us and, and have a good time, that's, you know, that's what I'm here for, to make the fans happy. That's true, and you have always been there for them. Is there anyone you'd like to give a special yeah. shout-out to out there that's listening, or anyone special out there? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I, I saw like that Dave Mustaine is cancer free. I just saw that on the internet and I just want to say I'm so happy for you, Dave. That was my first tour in America and Dave Mustaine, all the guys that were so nice to me. So I'm so happy that he's like, you know, like cancer free and that he's working and I wish him all the best and all the people out there, you know, who, you know, who feel like not well, you know, where the sickness I like. Give them good metal power and energy and hope that everybody's doing great and that we can rock forever. <laughs> there we go. All right, can you do a shout out for the radio station, please? Hey, Metalhead, this is Bell Pesci. You're tuned into the Thunderhead show on Metal Devastation Radio.com, where metal reigns supreme. I wish you all the best and stay metal. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, hell yeah. Killer interview with DJ, uh, DJ Thunderous and also Doro Pesh, our Valentine for today, uh, and all of you guys as well. So, big shout out to everybody that was tuned in. Up next, uh, we have one another track Dora wanted played. Uh, we kind of shifted gears on this one. This one is called Living Life to the Fullest uh, off of that album we were speaking about. Also, have some Motorhead coming up, Warlock, with, uh, and uh, some Lita Ford, Halloween, or Halloween, Cobra and Lotus. Stay tuned, crank it up. Big shout out to everybody tuned in. Living on to a dream Living life full of ecstasy It's all that you need Living life to the fullest Living on the belief Living on with integrity It's all to be free I'm so grateful to have known you I'm so grateful for all And you know I've been missing you In my heart Deep in my heart Living life to the fullest Living on to a dream Living life full of ecstasy Living life to the fullest Living on the belief Living on with integrity It's hard to be free Then you always put it your way Living on is the truth Sometimes lonely and far away, away. I feel just like you We feel just like you Living life to the fullest Living on to a dream Living life full of ecstasy It's all that you need Living life to the fullest Living on the belief Living on with integrity It's hard to be free